Yo, fine scouts and intrepid internet travelers. Welcome to my channel. I'm Josh, your binge buffoon, if you will have me. Today, or in this video, I'm going to be watching the second episode of House of the Dragon's second season. This, right now, is future me. Godspeed, past me. How many reactors do that? Probably a lot. Sorry. Whoever composed slash came up with this theme song, I'll put his name right there. I doubt he ever expected it would become this franchise's go-to jingle. You know what I mean? In the same way that Star Wars has the that accompanies the opening crawl of at least the entries in the Skywalker saga. Can you even get that thing up? Well enough for killing Blackwoods. <laughs> Put the boundary stones back. It's Bracken, man. Babe killer. What did you say? Your false queen Rhaenyra is a kinslayer. Oh god, it's literate. Aegon Targaryen is no true king. You wouldn't dare. Wow, that cut was startling. Holy shit. Wow. Oh, not the fellas. I cannot fault him for keeping his own. No, real quick. I like how that was done before because we got a taste of what it's like amongst the people. It's them squabbling over who they're, they're backing politically. That said, it, it felt very, very real in that way. It's outside of who we're rooting for as a viewer. It's just this is what it's doing to the people, you know. We should really just move. They will not even remember what it was that began the war in the first place. But it's easy enough they usurped my throne. Or was it when the child was beheaded? Or when Aemond killed Luke? Yeah, it's all just... We teeter now at the point where none of it will matter. Right, this is how it all feels. The desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten. Right. There may be another way. Don't give us false hope, Renice. She came to me in the hours after your Lord Father's death. She knows war is coming. There is no war so hateful to the gods as a war between kin. Mm. And no war so bloody as a war between dragons. Well, that's debatable. She sent a raven. I do not care to read her message. Hey, uh, how's it going? How you doing she, over there? She permitted it. Mm. As you permitted the murder of a little boy in his bed. Yeah, it's an apt comparison, truly. Unfortunately. Alicent is in King's Landing. Her son sits my throat. Her brother, though. There is nothing more to be said. <laughs> For whatever reason, in that moment, I just thought of a million voices crying out. Oh, God, not this guy again. When it cut to Kristen Cole. Even his co workers don't like him. I guess his underlings. Obviously, he's the hand now. And he's the top dog, uh, Kingsguard. Good morrow, your grace. My lord. Forgive my lateness. I'm sure this will be a hell of a display of Sir Christian Cole's intellectual prowess. House Bracken took it upon themselves to attack the Blackwoods, who declared for the Pretender. Good. First blood in our name. That's, it's clever. The people literally decided to start the war amongst themselves. More than an excuse for them to indulge their ancient grudge. It's no true war. It is an, yeah, the ancient grudge, right. That's true to life, isn't it? We'll, we'll use our political affiliations or the things that we believe in to lash out. Sometimes just as an excuse to argue with people we have problems with outside of the things we're arguing about. The Brackens, they, you know, years ago they took our chickens, fuckers. This council must rediscover the discipline it lately had if it's to be of any use. Mm. The Riverlands are the key to the war. Harren Hall is the key to the Riverlands. The biggest castle in the Seven Kingdoms. 
I will turn the Crown land houses who declared for Rhaenyra to our cause. We will add their numbers to our own and then turn west, or I will enlist the Brackens, subdue the Riverlands, and take Harrenhal. Vega will remain here. Yeah, you need... You'll need a dragon. We will be more likely to encounter one if we field one of our own. Yeah, that's true. It's a brave thought, but we cannot risk your loss. Why not? Then wouldn't you sort of succeed him? I'm as fearsome as any of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. You want to be fearsome, but you're not. You kind of look like a little Weasley Sebastian Stan, to be honest with you. I was trying to think who Aegon reminds me of. And I was like, he's, he's got the same face as the Winter Soldier. That's how you know he can't be trusted. Or can be trusted. He means well. He's just been brainwashed. And likes the family. What price would you set? A place at your court. Wait a second. I know the workings of the Red Keep. And the movements of those who serve there. If you're back from prior reactions to this series, I don't know if this is going where I think it's going. But I totally said that Rhaenyra would make the White Worm her hand. And if this happens, I love things I say. Sea Smoke, my late Lord Husband's dragon. He's grown restless of late. We cannot know why. I forgot about Corliss' son. He's alive, right? Obviously. That was a really nice thing that she did. Her and Damon, I suppose, to fake his death. And then be accused of killing him. And then just just keep quiet about it. This series very much highlights the connection between Dragon and Ryder. Something we've always been aware of. But I think it fleshes out that relationship in a very interesting way. And it's very subtle. Just with like Damon and Rhaenyra's dragons reacting to things that are happening to their riders. You know, even when it's just like threats, verbal threats. It breaks my heart to send my boys away, not knowing when I will see them again. Yeah. I need you to be the mother to them that I cannot. That's a big ask. Make this sacrifice willingly. For all of us. Your grace. I feel for her. I mean, her dad's went to get cigarettes and might never come back. And her mom's dead. And her stepmom is like, this is your life now. Is this... David? Yeah. At Harrenhal. Wow. This is like, I don't know. For whatever reason, this sequence right here, landing on this castle in the rains, really felt like something out of the Lord of the Rings. In that suit of armor. Oh yeah, this castle is just sort of, not in ruins, but... Kind of after Aegon the Conqueror burnt it to the not to the ground but burnt the crap out of it. Aegon, I always do that. I like how spooky Heron Hall is. I love the vibe of Heron Hall. I actually don't know if it felt spooky in Game of Thrones, but this is cool. They nailed the aesthetic here. The rain helps. Is it going to be Damon versus Kristen Cole in this episode, kinda? Why did Damon just decide to come here after his conversation with Rhaenyra? It kind of... This is like a horror movie. It almost seems to imply that Damon's trying to do what Kristen Cole's trying to do and is still trying to help Rhaenyra. I'm claiming Harrenhal. Oh, yeah, I guess that's what he's doing. I don't know if he's doing it for himself or for the cause. Yeah. They, he, this guy knew his time was numbered. He was just hanging out. Or his days were numbered, I mean. They were waiting for a leader. I, Sir Simon Strong, Castellan of Harrenhal. Simon Strong. Fealty to Rhaenyra of House Targaryen, first of her name. We'll get an answer here, whether or not he means... Supper is venison with black cabbage and peas. He's doing this in Rhaenyra's name or not. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> Larry's clubfoot is no lord of mine. Do you not think it's strange that his father perished by fire here in this damp place? That's right. It was the first fire here since Balerion ended the line of Harren the Black. Right, Balerion, because I was saying Aegon burned this place down, but I forget, it also, yeah, burnt last season. Yeah, my prince, your grace. Your grace. Harrenhal is the largest castle in the Seven Kingdoms. Mm. Well, it is also, not to be argumentative, in something of a state of disrepair. Yeah. Houses Bracken and Blackwood have long detested one another. Why? The answer to that is lost in time. I'm telling you, somebody sold, stole someone's chicken. Beget sin. Beget yeah. sin. Beget sin, beget sin. It's what Renice was saying to Rhaenyra before. Sin beget sin. That would be Lord Grover Tully, but he grows from Tully. It's said that he can no longer speak, nor seal his bowels. Oof. Perhaps the presence of the crown and a dragon will sharpen minds around these parts. If you are successful, well, when you are successful, <laughs> what then? We march on King's Landing and take the throne. It's a big chair. Made of swords. <laughs> so given his insistence that the man in Harrenhal call him your grace, that maybe he's trying to establish himself as a third party in this war, an entity separate from Rhaenyra. He wants to take his throne, the throne he's always wanted, the throne he's felt entitled to as the one to succeed Viserys. What are we, what is he then? Hashtag team what? Team D? Hashtag team D? Red? Hashtag team red? Sister. Oh, right. We're finally meeting the other uh, Hightower. Sorry. May the Seven guide you. Good night. And lead you not into shadow and death. <laughs> I love you too. And request that she grant her favor. That her Lord Commander may go into battle with her blessings. In his heart. Your grace. Huh. I wonder if, no. <laughs> I was gonna say, I wonder if true af affection is gonna grow between them, but no, it's too twisted to be true in the end. Y you always hope for that, though, if you're a romantic like me. Oh god, we back to the rat catcher from. Wow. That was an interesting way to tell us it's been a minute, at least. I do enjoy the pacing of this season, especially in relation to the passage of time. Obviously, in the first season, we had a lot of time jumps. This, we have things like fast travel, and maybe weeks are going by, and we just sort of have to gauge that, but obviously no major time jumps. And burn those who resist. No. If dragons begin fighting dragons, we invite our own destruction. Fear of it is in itself a weapon. The Greens will make the same calculation. <laughs> they will. They did already. Secure victory with armies, not with dragons alone. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it is time for you to think about secreting yourself somewhere safe. <clears throat> she won't hide. He proposed to conduct the war in my absence. It, it would merely be a precaution. <laughs> it would be treason. Council would do well to remember that their queen wears the crown of my grandsire. Trying to grab power, but or maybe they don't trust her. her side sooner than late. Yeah. These two have visceral chemistry, honestly. One of those babes is your heir. Joffrey. It would displease neither Rhaenyra nor the gods. Rhaena were named heir to Driftmark. The reoccurring names in this franchise. Lord of the, Lord tides. Of the tides. The girl knows nothing of ships, nor even of dragons. There is Rhaena or there is Joffrey. Both soon to be far from the creak of ships and the ocean's roar. She will know of dragons, though. We are at war, Corlys. Something must have befallen you. Then it is well that I am a good sailor. I'm rooting for Corlys, my dude. And here's she is. Far away from any danger with only babes to nurse me. You do a great service. Tyraxes and Stormcloud are young and vulnerable. These eggs are even more fragile. 
This is kind of a dope task. You will bear our hope for the future. Yeah, this isn't... I get that you have to leave, but whatever. Things are getting crazy around here. Yeah, never mind. She's obviously... She's taking the dragons and the babies. Dude, this is like the most important task she could give anyone. This is this is the future of the dinosaur, and she, I bet you she does a great job, uh, minus the dragons, because they probably all die. But the kids survive. We know Daenerys, and we know the the line goes on. Uh, so you know, see how it shifts to her face being like menace again, like it, it was at the very end of season one, because now she's sending away her vulnerabilities, the things that she's worried about the most, which is her youngest children. And her youngest dragons, so she can just go all out. I feel sad about Jaharis. But I ought not to, I think. As people die all the time. Especially babes. Oh god. Kraken. Gonna rationalize it. That horrid procession where the small folk all stared at me. I warrant they thought I had no more right to grief than they do. Mm. Only they lose their babes more than highborn ladies. Stranger comes for us all. I probably am misinterpreting that, but if the stranger means death, I like that a lot. I love your hair. The unknown. My concern has been more for you and what you have endured. Yeah. Hashtag protect Helena. Helena, I, I forgive you. What? Helena's so smart because she's assuming this is what Allison wants. I said that I forgive you. Because she's so used to her mother only caring about her own conscience and ego maybe i don't know yeah she's like i it, wow there are rumors that the king readies himself to fly to war only that i think it would benefit all of us to prevent our king from being brutally slain by our enemies and his body parts scattered to beasts and his court come to ruin would you not agree yep hashtag laris for hand i was given the conqueror's name and his crown so i shall wear his armor to war he's so desperate to be seen as strong when he's going to imitate Aegon the Conqueror. There are diverse rumors whispered on the streets of your city. In his courage and that wisdom. His grace was outwitted by his counselors and persuaded to fly to war with Sir Criston, so the Queen Alicent may reign in his absence. Who spreads these lies? Laris, probably. Laris can literally manipulate Aegon without even being in his court. Just by having conversations like this. My father always said he had no use for a master of whisperers. Mm. I find myself wanting for one. I fig okay. I figured this is going to be a regular thing. Shall we escort you to the dragon pit, Your Grace? Not going now. And it, it does seem wise mm. on reflection. Mm. You could come out with us, my king. So Martin has a new squire that wants bedding in. <sighs> Are you sworn to chastity now? <laughs> 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 of course, Your Grace. <laughs> Is he still one of the boys? He's not still one of the boys. Or doesn't want to be. He is. There is an arc happening here. Because we saw the episode when he was just drinking with the boys. And now he doesn't even want to be like them anymore. He's done with locker room talk, you know? I think I was talking about how Chris and Cole... This is supposed to be celibate in last episodes. We always hear the O's and I shall take no wife, I shall father no children. It doesn't mean they can't have sex. Reason would just be like, well, don't do those things if you don't want to risk breaking your O's. Both. I've had quite a day of it. Yeah. Not sure I'm much for yeah, he's, he, he escaped Sharshank. He crawled through however many yards of doo-doo to freedom. Get busy living or get busy dying. Jeez. Who was your grandson? They call him the conciliator. King Jaehaerys. <laughs> you are saying you're a Targaryen. <laughs> I'm the son of Balon the Brave. Bastard brother to Prince Daemon and the late King Viserys. Uncle to the one true queen, Rhaenyra Targaryen. The blood of the dragon runs through these veins, and yes, men would take my head for it. Look, you can tell. 
by his hair. Yeah, because I'm their half brother, you yeah, yeah. fuckwits. Oh, right. right. yeah, I'll tell you who else doesn't have silver hair. The rightful heir to the Iron Throne, my nephew, Prince Gisarius Valarian. Well, now everyone just heard you say that. He's have a nephew. Dude, what? This is bullshit, obviously. All hail the king! All hail! He's terrified. This is bullshit. He's totally bullshit. It's like in the Song of Ice and Fire, the fake, uh, what's his face? I forget his name. That fake Targaryen. He might not be, but he must be fake because he's not in the show. <laughs> Take back everything I said about Aegon not wanting it to be one of the boys anymore. Wow. It's a little tame, but... Wow. <laughs> I know, just a Jesus for you, my boy. <laughs> but that happens. It's happened to me. I live in Wisconsin, people. If you're unfamiliar with me in the channel, I've said that many times. And we have quite the drinking culture. It's, it's gotten the better of me, unfortunately. Many years of my life, I've, I've drank away. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Amen the fierce! <laughs> you have come so far, and and yet you still lie with your very first. Did you fuck her like a hound? Woo! 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 <laughs> Hard luck for your squire, though. As you can see, she <laughs> she's now very much occupied. <laughs> your squire is welcome to her. One oar is as good as another. <laughs> Dude was just, just, I'll commend him. Just straight up loud and proud with that flaccid penis. That was brave. That scene, I felt embarrassed in that scene for everybody. I never give too much thought to the relationship between Aemon and Aegon, other than how they essentially use one another. Like, they don't have an actual bond as brothers. It doesn't feel like, at least. Not like Jason Luke did. Well, we didn't see much of that, I just, I'm assuming. The kinship there was special. Here we go, what did Alanson have to say? Rhaenyra, remember that shirt you borrowed a decade ago? Or uh, the, the dress? I guess shirts would be a thing, necessarily, in the way that I mean. What was I going to say before? Oh, that, when you get s steeped in the drinking culture of any place, or social circle, Sometimes you mean to leave it, but you default on it when you don't know what else to do. Comfortable. We're exposed. What? Get to the trees! It's Damon. Also, uh, uh, whatever his name is, Hightower, feels like he's got the upper hand on... Oh no, it's not Damon. Feels like he's got Chris and Cole's balls in his purse. Pocket. What is she gonna do though? She doesn't seem like the type to just burn these soldiers alive, knights alive, right now. Stop! What are you doing here? She's not gonna just do this. Moon dancer. Let's see if Bela's got some of her dad in her. Leaving. Gwen? Gwen? Gwen Hightower. They're Gwen and the Royal they'll be night. hunting. And we must move under the trees and by cover of dark starting tonight. And no fucking inns. Ah. Yeah, we're listening to me. Kristen Cole. With some half dozen other knights, I'm sure of it. Oh, nice. Could I? Rhaenyra's like, I should have never fucked him. Ridiculous. Young, dumb, and full of engage, bodily fluids so always gets you in trouble. Exactly. Your Grace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she does have some of her dad. Cole will look to increase his numbers, and he may call upon a dragon of his own. This is why you must act now, Your Grace. Loose the dragon's root coal out and burn him. I have heard your arguments. And will consider them. I don't know if I've talked about this yet this season, but Renice, I don't want to say it's self-indulgent, but she is sort of living vicariously through Rhaenyra. I forget what they call her now, but the queen that never was, the queen that should have been. She's 
in a sort of can relate to Rhaenyra in a way that no one else can. I do think she wants the best for Rhaenyra, though. I don't think it's like Damon. I don't think she's using her. I think she's just advising her and then watching her, like, really feeling her position. It's very motherly. I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and I was talking about how sometimes parents are too hard on their children because once they have kids, they sort of stop improving themselves. Not that because they're lazy or anything like that, but because their lives become consumed by two things, work, providing, and then raising their children. So their children become their second chance if they didn't get to become who they wanted to be before they What's had children. On He's hallucinating, dreaming. Is this place? Have to clean up after oh my god! Dude, they were deaf. They had to do this. Millie Elcock was just so good as Rhaenyra. We had to see her again. A lot of people were like, weren't ready to say goodbye. Oh my god, and she's sewing on his little head. <laughs> What the fuck was that, dude? What the fuck was that? And he got upset by it, so... Who the you fuck... You will die in this place. I believe her. I believe her. 100%. Just standing in front of the God's Word and then this creepy lady is like... You will die here? Okay, yeah. Thanks a lot. What an easy payday for Billy Alcock, too. He was in this episode for seconds. But I do feel like that scene, or whatever it was, that hallucination, that dream, whatever it was, he could have been sleepwalking, I don't know what happened there, represented it. Damon's guilt. The kid, his... I suppose that would have been his nephew, whose head was lost because of his actions, and then he saw the young Rhaenyra, who he essentially groomed, let's be honest. Two people he's had a very negative impact on for the most part. Yeah, and young Rainier is like, I always have to clean up after you. He I, he does have a conscience. I like that scene a lot. What do you know of the movements of Alicent Hightower? I honestly, I don't know if I was supposed to try and read that message that she sent her before, but I didn't. She sent a raven. Oh. She has expressed her Express remorse. remorse, all right. I must see her face to face. It, I just don't think it's it's the train has left us. The dragon has flown away. It doesn't matter if Alicent feels remorse at this point. I think Egon's in charge, even though he didn't want it. You know, it's too late. Most folk pay no mind to a woman who has not dressed as a queen <laughs> or lured herself with the eyes of men. Mm. So I make my way to the Red Keep, I presume, and ring the bell. There is one place Alicent goes where you may yet find her alone. Dude, that'll be an amazing scene if it happens. Seeing those two get together again. Oh God, she, she, shame, shame. Wow. See the fast travel, things move so swiftly. In this show especially compared to game of thrones earlier seasons but i think this show kind of nails pacing in a way that game of thrones in its later seasons they went overboard with the fast travel this i think employs it reasonably this is a great disguise honestly i wonder if this is this part's in fire and blood Oh, he's just being careful. This is so cool. Dude, what the hell is gonna happen? Uh, Allison could flip the fuck out. Oh, and I love it that it's here. Because we saw in the first episode of Son for a Son that she was mourning Viserys. Sort of. So they would meet up at the place where she expressed remorse. Like she did in her message. Hey, friend. <laughs> My god, I've got goosebumps. I'm nervous. I'm super nervous. That's good. <laughs> no, no. 
Dude, 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 dude. Chill. I must speak with you. This is crazy. If I could cry out, your knights would find me. I would be taken or slain. Do not before I killed you. <sighs> oh, I have become badly. <laughs> this is cr This was so, so stupid, honestly. This was so dumb. <laughs> this was so stupid. <laughs> Rhaenyra, what the I fuck are you doing? Together, you and I. Yeah, okay, yeah. The day my brother was born. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit her with the nostalgia he trip. Knew, even then, that men trained up for battle are eager to fight. To see blood and glory. I know what you're talking about, yeah, the good old days. She said she saw in you a wish to avert the worst of what may now come. Which you can do if you just let them kill Rhaenyra now. I, feel, I find it hard to believe that Alicent wouldn't just do that. Soldiers! But if you and I may come to terms... There are no terms now. I am a mother too, and you have yet to answer for the murder of my son. I repudiate that act with all my heart. Of course you do. I'm usurping my rightful inheritance. I can't believe this scene's even happening. <laughs> Wouldn't she be like, you don't work here? Your father changed his mind. Mere yeah, hours before I left him, he had affirmed my right to the throne. A right he upheld steadfastly. Yeah, the entire time he was alive. Right, so in his dying, his dying breath when he was delusional, you you're going to believe that? In an instant. I will. Uh, just tell her what he said, and then Renee will be like, well, he's talking about the Aegon stream and thought you were me. When was your plan first laid? Was your ambition so cute? He changed his mind. Don't blame her, just, why don't you guys change his mind. talk about it more than this, kind of. Well, never mind. Do you think me capable of such naked deceit? What did he say? Yeah. At the end. A good question. Just tell her. He was weary. It was hard at times to understand. But he spoke Ekon's name. He said he was the prince that was promised to the realm. Right, right, right. What? I desire peace as you do, but to possess. Did my father use those words? The prince that was promised. Did he? I like that this is actually happening. He spoke to you of the Song of Ice and Fire. It's a story he once told. <laughs> About Aegon the Conqueror. Oh, wow. And now Alicent's like, oh, I misunderstood. Oh, shit. Wow, I like that she's getting this clarification so early on. Alicent's totally realizing she's wrong now. I actually love this. You are discovered. I love it. It's been a mistake. Please. You can prevent this, Alison. Wow. Not let your pride blind you. There's a bit. No mistake. Yeah, she can't. This is. Dude. This is totally in character for her to be like. Father is gone from I can't. I can't acknowledge this. I just can't acknowledge this. It's too late. Just like how she won't console her children who are all fucked up. Really. Like, truly. Like, in the last episode, she wouldn't console Agon. Because she's like, ah, I can't do anything about this kid. It's too late, Renira. It's too late! It's exactly what I just said. Sorry, I say things and I get excited when they're uh, reaffirmed. What a fucking scene. What a fucking scene. Because it's... she. See, Allison doesn't have any balls. I, I know people are going to disagree. She doesn't... She's like Kristen Cole in that she doesn't like to look in the mirror. And she's like, I, I, this is the path I've chosen. It is what it is. You know... Oh fuck, what a great scene to end on. What an amazing scene to end on. That episode, I think I said at the end of the last episode, that I wish that episode would have ended with the fight between Eric and Arik. Because the first episode, ha you know, that final sequence was very much appeared at the end of the sentence. This scene was very much appeared at the end of the sentence. I also like, because I just rewatched part of that scene where Rhaenyra is talking to Alicent about, I remember... At the tourney from season one, when my brother was born, how we recognized then how men seek blood and glory. And they're surrounded by men speak seeking blood and glory, which isn't what either of them necessarily want. I like that we're hearkening back to that moment in the series. Not the tourney itself, but when her brother was born. Because Viserys was a man who pondered blood and glory didn't seek it necessarily he knew what it meant in regards to his legacy they know what it means in regards to their legacy and that tourney that there was no glory in it 
because of that birth scene and what happened, but there was blood, which is what this war is going to be. It's just going to be blood, no glory. I liked this scene a lot between the two. I was very surprised by it, probably because I expected it to come later in the series, this clarification. I have to imagine that this scene, this moment between Rhaenyra and Alicent isn't in the book. Definitely not, given how Fire and Blood is like a history book. This isn't something that would be in the history books. This isn't something that Rhaenyra or Alicent would want people to know about, especially given the fact that now Alicent has this clarification that she knows what she heard Viserys say isn't what she thought it meant. Rhaenyra, no one's going to believe her. I think there's a lot of people who are going to be like, this doesn't make any sense. Alicent could have ended the war. She could have had Rhaenyra killed in this moment. Rhaenyra could have killed Alicent. This could have ended the entire series. I've talked to some other people about this show, and some of them have had issues with how convenient things have felt. I haven't felt that way. I'm enjoying the fuck out of it. But for example, at the end of it, uh, episode one where were all the guards why does this feel so ridiculous and stupid this blood and cheese stuff like they're bumbling idiots who are just making this mistake like this doesn't feel realistic i think that people are going to say the same thing about this scene between allison and rhaenyra although i loved it the thing that i'm always sort of amazed by with this series because i heard recently that when they were casting it it was during covid so they didn't do any chemistry tests nobody read together they just cast all of the roles in a bubble but for example, Olivia Cook and Emma Darcy have amazing chemistry together. They're amazing in scenes together. This was an amazing scene. Which is that scene with Helena, I suppose, reinforced Allison's desire to feel justified in her actions. That's really why I enjoyed what we saw at the beginning of this episode with the two feuding families. Because people need that. They need to feel righteous. It gives them purpose to think, to know that what they believe is right. Even if you're convinced that your cause is virtuous, and maybe it is, that still doesn't justify anything and everything. I want to add some thoughts to this video, a more focused review, if you will, because I was annoyed with some of my aimless afterthoughts. Probably cut most of it. I just talked a lot about truth. And it made no sense. And it was very self-indulgent. But in my defense, it was like one in the morning. I'll start by saying, if I didn't leave that in, that the logic surrounding that final scene definitely hurts the episode a little bit. Rhaenyra getting into King's Landing like that, presumably being able to leave, Alicent letting her leave, it's all extremely convenient and really asks the viewer to push suspension of disbelief beyond what is normally asked. However, I don't know how the writers could reasonably put those two in a scene together at this point. If it was going to happen, it sort of had to be now or never, that conversation. And I I'm happy that it happened. I thought it was incredibly acted and well-written, the dialogue. And it served a significant purpose both for this episode and the series in general. But I'll reiterate that I did really like this episode. To play contrarian, I think for some it may have felt a bit inconsequential and boring, but I felt that thematically and as a setup for the Dance of Dragons, it might have been pro probably this season's most focused. It began with the Blackwoods and the Brackens, who not unlike the twins in the previous episode, are a reflection of those they are sworn to slash ruled by, as well as the rumors surrounding political figures. I think it's really important to see that opening argument and then that immediate cut to the fallout of it as a way of really establishing the political landscape that the citizens of Westeros find themselves in. More than that, that feud is an allegory for war itself in obvious ways, or it at least represents man's propensity for war devoid of collective rhyme or reason. The very next scene then sees Renice talk to Rhaenyra about how sin begets sin until everyone's forgot what started the war in the first place, which we could argue is the misunderstanding surrounding Viserys' last words. But I think the truth, and I think the final scene in this episode hammers this home, is that whoever Alicent or Rhaenyra says has claim to the throne is just an excuse used by the men in their orbit to wage war. I think that was made very clear last season when Alicent let that cat out of the bag immediately after Viserys died and people like Otto just ran with it to serve their own interests. In the last episode, we see that Otto doesn't even believe Viserys chose Aegon. 
because it doesn't make sense and it doesn't need to. In that final scene, Rhaenyra tells Alicent how they learned very early on in the pilot episode that men who are trained for battle are eager to fight to seek blood and glory. And perhaps that's the main theme of this series, war, the futility and inevitability of it because human nature or perhaps the nature of man to find purpose through obtaining power, often at the expense of others. But you can't really blame soldiers or warriors for wanting to fight. I mean, I've, I've met many infantrymen in my life who were trained for battle, but then never deployed. And that irks them. And I get it. Or I don't get it. I don't mean to understand. But I could see how if you're molded to do something and then never get to do it, what purpose do you serve? Even Jace in this episode is looking at his mom like, um, let's just do this thing already. So I don't necessarily blame Damon for who he is, or Aemond for who he is, or Jace for who he is, or even Kristen Cole per se, per se. But I do blame the old men sitting at that table, the tables, with both women's councils wanting to accelerate things, and Rhaenyra and Alicent siding with restraint, saying, relax, get yourself together, let me think about this. And to be fair, it probably makes sense in this situation to strike first and get ahead of things. Still, there's certainly this testosterone-fueled, egocentric energy at the heart of the, all those that pair are trying to reel in, or at least Rhaenyra. Maybe I'm giving Allison too much credit here, but she is dealing with the same sort of environment. And that's why when they meet up at the end of the episode, they are very much in the same place. It's just Allison who decides or maybe just realizes. I think it's up to the viewer to decide whether or not it's actually too late. It most likely is. I think this is true to life and real. With that last scene putting to rest the pivotal misunderstanding, it doesn't matter. I believe I mentioned in my reaction that I thought a realization like that on Allison's part would come later in the series. A realization that was extremely gratifying as a viewer, by the way. But I think it's really smart to get that out of the way now before the war officially kicks off meaning like the first official battle between their forces, if we're not counting the Blackwoods and the Brackens. I think it's really smart to get it out of the way now so that no one, not even the audience, believes that a conversation could change things. Like the conversation happened and most likely it's going to result in no course correction. There's still a lot of what ifs. Rhaenyra could have read that letter earlier. Maybe Allison still tries to reel in her boys, but I don't think maybe i don't think she will soldiers are marching and the people have already decided war is happening and it probably would have still happened even if alicent didn't misunderstand viserys otto was always looking for a reason to get his family on, in power or on the throne i even saw something yesterday about how the maesters always sided with otto because they wanted the targaryens off the throne or at least in chaos i've talked in previous reactions about Damon's lust for war and bloodshed and glory. This episode fleshes that out even further. Damon and whoever else were bound to vie for the throne. And Rhaenyra being a woman, like Rhaenys, is just a controversial figure to begin with. That's the reality of war as it exists in this world. And maybe e even in ours. I mean, a lot of what happens in this world is inspired by real life history. I think the war that inspired the Dance of Dragons is called the Anarchy War or the War of Anarchy. When Henry V's daughter was in, found herself in a similar situation that Rhaenyra finds herself in. Henry V? Henry I? Maybe it was the second. Fifth wouldn't make sense. Regardless, it's never about truth or what is right. It's about power dynamics and influence. And being a bystander among all that is just easier than seeking truth or trying to keep the peace. Which is why leaders often just find themselves as a cog in the war machine, which is what I think is happening to Alicent and Rhaenyra. Also, this episode is very much about the rumor mill. The rumor mill as it relates to the common folk. And even Aegon himself. We, we have that scene with him and uh, Laris and how rumors influence how he acts. Public perception. I gotta say that this episode does really make Rhaenyra even more likable. And hopefully this realization on Allison's part develops her further in a way that makes her more likable. Olivia Cook does a great job with the role and making Allison empathetic, but the character becomes more and more deplorable. But her truth is rattled. I think in that final scene, even Rhaenyra's truth is rattled for a second. Emma Darcy does an amazing job with her facial expressions and going through the various emotions in that conversation. They both do. It'll be interesting to see how it affects both of them moving forward. The realization that this war is based upon nothing, but it 
it's happening and maybe has to happen anyway. But how can you be steadfast in your convictions? Commit to all of this, the bloodshed and the horror, when it's kind of all a joke. Again, hopefully Allison does try to argue for peace because you always got to try for peace. I think that'll make her easier to root for. Even if she's ignored, it's never too late to try, which is why I think most people love Rhaenyra because she's still trying even after she lost her son. But again, in my opinion, the show really needs to make the Greens more likable because it's way too easy to just full on root for Team Black at this point. We'll see what happens. That conversation between the, the pair is very much an inflection point. More so, arguably, than Luke's death. Outside of that, the episode also focused on Damon and Aegon and Aemon again, sort of, and them struggling with the kind of men they want to be in this war. That scene with Damon and Harrenhal is really fascinating, and it further complicates him as a character in a way I didn't expect. Seeing young Rhaenyra and then the tears in his eyes, he's not proud of what he's done. And I don't know if we've seen him harbor much regret. And all I've ever really heard about Book Damon was that he was a cycle, more or less. An agent of chaos. But that's probably just how people saw him. And I'm happy that this show is really humanizing him outside of his reputation. They're giving him a heart. I wanted to do that with all of the characters. I think the first three episodes of this season really set the stage well for the Dance of Dragons. With this episode being the, truly the point of no return. Basically, in a roundabout way, way Renice even says as much. Aemon has even forsaken his madame. So maybe there's nothing holding him back now. I expect things to kick off in the Riverlands in the next episode. That has very much been set up. Yeah, I think that's all I have for this one. Big love to everyone who was bored enough to join me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Drop me off this platform if you must. Otherwise, like, subscribe. Dislike for cathartic reasons. Drink water. Stay young. And remember, don't be an idiot. Be a buffoon. Peace.